The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell The term going viral is commonplace today. We say a Facebook post or an internet image goes viral when it is shared at an incredible rate and spreads throughout a population. It's clear that this term comes from epidemiology, the study of the rapid spread of disease. Of course, a disease is something you do not want to have spread. But what about things you do want to spread? When it comes to a product, an idea, or a social behavior that you are interested in promoting, it would be advantageous to understand what makes something go viral. That's the subject of the book, The Tipping Point, by Malcolm Gladwell. The tipping point is that moment in time when something explodes with growth, no turning back. Think of a fire that has just been started. It grows slowly until it suddenly seems to explode into something uncontrollable, spreading like wildfire, we say. That's the tipping point. What determines if a product, idea, or social trend will reach that point? Research reveals three factors that influence getting to the tipping point. One, the law of the few. Two, the stickiness factor. Three, the power of context. The law of the few refers to the idea that coaches have known for a long time. On any given team, 20% are leaders and the others are followers. The law of the few acknowledges this and those few are the people who regularly influence others. The few are made up of three types of people, connectors, mavens, and salespeople. Connectors. You know connectors, they are the networkers. They tend to run in many circles, have lots of friends, and be super outgoing. If you need to get the word out on an event, say your yard sale this weekend, make sure a connector knows. Connectors can reach outside your social boundaries and pass the news. Mavens. The second type of the influential few are the mavens. A maven knows a lot about a wide variety of topics, and the wonderful thing is, a maven wants to help. Mavens research and are ready with the information you need when you need it. Let's say you are stumped on which website builder to use for your new launch. A maven would be the friend who pulls up the rates and services for various plans and helps you compare them. Mavens have a wealth of information to share and a willingness to share it. In fact, Connectors often get their info from mavens. Salespeople. The few also contain salespeople. These are the type of folks that just sync with you when you meet them. They are very attuned to body language and know how to quickly make you feel at ease with them. They seem credible and trustworthy. With a few subtle hints that you may not even notice, they can have you giving the address at the graduation ceremony next week or taking your cohort to lunch at a new Thai restaurant. And you didn't even know you liked Thai food. To see the few in action, take, for example, the upcoming holiday gala fundraiser for your favorite charity. The law of the few means that you should enroll the help of these types of people if you want the gala to really take off. Mavens will know what needs to be done and can research what they don't know in a flash. Connectors will get the word out in circles that may not be on your radar, let alone accessible to you. And the salespeople? They are going to fill their tables and recruit more table hosts, too. So, to get a social trend, an idea, or a product to move past that plodding line that turns up like a half grin, an awareness of the influential few is helpful in striving toward the tipping point. But for a true chance to go viral, research suggests you need more. Before we get to the second factor, please don't forget to support our channel by liking, subscribing, and commenting on this video. Alright, let's get back to it. The Stickiness Factor The stickiness factor is familiar to you if you've ever gotten a jingle stuck in your head. Let's take the insurance industry as an example. Insurance companies have put substantial effort into developing the stickiness factor. You are in good hands with Allstate, the progressive expert, Flo, of course, and the cute little walking lizard, Geico. Words, images, and even characters can be sticky. Your memory and subsequent connection with them is subconscious, but ready to emerge when a need arises. Developing something sticky is not real predictable and often takes patience coming through trial and error, research and input, and minor adjustments. Little changes in image details, wording, or even price might move the fulcrum a bit closer to the tipping point. Power of context. The power of context is an influential factor that can be easy to miss but shouldn't be ignored. Context refers to the environment into which the idea, product, or trend is being introduced as well as the packaging of your idea. The time and place need to be right and the context needs to fit your concept. An example of the power of context is what schools call the hidden curriculum. Research shows that school environment, the hidden curriculum, influences the academic, visible curriculum. It's about the power of context. 
If the halls are littered, the teachers dress sloppily, the textbooks are shoddy, and the organization is lax, academic performance tends to match that context, no matter how glorious your academic goals are. But the opposite is also true. Given the context of an orderly school staffed by professionally dressed teachers, handing out up-to-date textbooks in an environment with clear organizational standards, academic success is much more likely. Through our recent worldwide struggle against COVID-19, we have certainly learned that it helps to know how a disease is spread so we can stop it. The flip side of that is figuring out what ignites growth for things that we want to spread rapidly. To have a better chance for your idea, product, or trend to reach the tipping point and hit going viral status, consider putting these principles to work for you. Enroll the help of those valuable few, connectors, mavens, and salespeople. Patiently search for the formula for stickiness and never overlook the power of context.